What's going on everyone? Dom from The Game Looters here. In this video, I'm going to tell you the six different ways that you can get S rank in Fire Emblem Three Hopes. Now, S rank is something that you want to achieve to be able to A, pat yourself on the back, but B, to also be able to get all the max rewards you can from every single quest and mission that you have in Fire Emblem Three Hopes. So I'm going to go over the six different ways that you can ensure that you increase your odds to get the S rank in Fire Emblem Three Hopes. So let's go ahead and transition to the game and I'll show you exactly, uh, I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So, uh, the, the first way that you can do is, well, let me, let me start here. Let's go to the record keeper. So currently I am in my Black Eagle save, okay? And in my Black Eagle save right now, you can see I'm working my way through getting S rank for everything. I'm going through each of the different ones and making sure that I get S rank. And you may ask, you know, why do you need to get S rank? The, the short answer is you don't. But if you see here, uh, if you get S rank, on this one, you get a Rocky Burdock. On this one, you get a Wing Thresher. On this one, you get a Blessed Land. So you're going to increase your odds of getting really cool pieces of of, of uh, items and weapons and things here. Steel Tome, uh, Alo Pomegranate, so Bullion, you know, money. So you're going to be able to get a lot of really cool things. So right now I'm currently in Chapter 8 of my Black Eagle save. And I've been working here. So see, if we look here, I got a large Bullion and a Leaven Sword. I love the Leaven Sword. I think Leaven Sword is awesome. So these are a couple of different things that you're going to get by earning the S, S rank and S tier. So how do you get S rank? Well, there's not really a, a a cheat or a, you know, perfect method. But if you do these six things, then you're going to be able to get, you know, the better chances of getting S rank. So the battles. first stop is heading to the training grounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and head to the training instructor. Uh, instructor. Let's go ahead and head to the training instructor. So the first training thing is level up your character. So... The main thing to know about, so this is step number one, level up your characters. So the main thing to know is if you look at all your different characters that you have, you can level them up as far as the max character. So right now, Shez for me is level 40, so I can, I can increase my level for every single one of these characters up to level 40. So why is that important? Well, if we come in and we, if we come and we go back to do certain missions that let's say we got an A or a B in, It'll tell you here, okay? It'll tell you uh, right above my face. So if you look right here, it'll tell you level 19, level 20, level 21. So this is going to be the easier way to get it is just by being way grossly overleveled versus the actual mission taking place. So that's n number one is level up your character so that way you have the best chance of getting S tier. All right. This is step number two. Step number two is make sure that you have the most powerful weapons so make sure that you have the best weapons so if you go and look at your characters make sure like i said earlier i like the leaven swords that's what i'm rocking on my chest but make sure that you give your 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 characters make sure that you give your your confidants the best opportunity to do well so if we look at hubert he has a level, level b weapon if we look at ferdinand a level b weapon if we look at i don't use linhart we'll look at linhart but if we look at casper he has a magic bow level b and then if we look at like bernie i love bernie if we look here she has level b and then i i equipped her with battalion level b and then I've been using her combat arts, and I've been slowly going and doing level 3, level 3, level 2. I've been focusing on her different combat arts. So, you, you might have to replay certain missions, you know, over and over to increase each of these characters. But basically, equip your characters with the most powerful weapons and options that they're going to have. Alright, let's go to tip number 3, and this will help you, okay? So, tip number 3 is go over to your kitchen master and make sure you're always cooking make sure you're always cooking because if we look at cook a meal if we look right over here so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and, and put the arrow right there so if we look right there we see that we have active meal effects and the active meal effects that i have right now during this chapter is i slightly have i can slightly fill the awakening gauge at the start of the battle slightly fill the warrior gauge at the start of the battle the Awakening Gauge feels faster, somewhat faster. The Warrior Gauge feels faster. And Weapon Durability loss has reduced. So the Weapon Durability has reduced during the battle. So I currently have those five different meal effects in play right now. And I am completely maxed out of how much 
how many meal effects I can have. So max those out and have as many meal effects in play as you can. Now, it's going to depend on how many task points you have during this mission. So you may only have one or two. But however many you have, have as many meal effects as you can if your goal is to get S tier. All right, the next one is, this one is more of a battle one. So I'll just kind of talk through this one here, which is making sure that you're using your allies as adjutants. So it's going to be vitally important during battle that you are using your allies as adjutants. So when you have a specific character, go and find the uh, the uh, supporting character to that one. So if you have a bow character, find a magic user. I typically find a magic user always to try and heal me, but... Make sure that you go and get an adjutant that'll support the character that you are currently playing as so that most of the missions are timed. So you want to be able to do them quickly. And by having an adjutant, they're going to support you with follow-up attacks. They're going to guard you. They're going to offer unique support. And they are, they're going to have certain abilities that they're able to use in support for you. And the biggest one is they're going to have partner special. So when you push A on your, on your Pro Controller or Joy-Con to activate your special, they're going to activate what's called a partner special, which will allow you to do the most damage and i'm telling you i have one shotted by Lith with a partner special so definitely make sure that you're using your adjutant so that is step number four step number five is at the beginning of each battle make sure that you're issuing the right orders now what this means is get your allies to where they need to go as quickly as possible there are a lot of missions most of your basic missions are seven minutes so that means you're gonna have seven minutes to complete that basic mission so let's say you have four characters, Edelgard, Shez, or whoever, right? Edelgard, um, Bernadetta, and Ferdinand, as well as Shez. Put them where they need to be. Make sure that you pay attention to the arrows when you're selecting the enemy. If they have up, that means it's good. If they have down, that means they're at a disadvantage. Put them where they need to go. Take over the strongholds quickly and use Shez as a as a kind of mediator between the two. So what I usually do is I'll send the four away to different areas, I will take over one stronghold, swap to the next character, manually take over that stronghold, swap, 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 come back, and then I will come back to my menu and I will resend them to where they need to go and refocus their, their attention to get specific key targets and to look over specific items that I want during this specific mission. So that is step number five, is make sure that you're actually telling them what they need to do. The last one is, I already mentioned it, is defeat key targets so make sure that if you have mages on the field make sure if you have uh specific um sp if you have specific enemies on the field if you have a specific uh you know enemy that is from the opposite side you know whether let's 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 say whether that's a specific character like you know currently uh, on my last mission i had to face hilda and marianne and lysithia they came on the field. If you have to face Geralt and his mercenaries, you know, make sure that you're you're choosing them as quick as possible. Also, on screen, if it tells you that a specific individual is in trouble, send at least one character over there and pick them so that they can defend them. Finish what you're doing and swap over as quickly as possible. So the last thing is make sure that you are defeating and aiming for key targets, especially ones that have an advantage over you because that's going to be very, very important for you to defeat them and you're also gonna be able to get really cool item drops that could restore your warrior gauge or work awakening gauge that way it helps you finish off faster so by doing all these things this is going to get you the best bonus experience and rewards from the s rank rewards so make sure that you are focusing on these six things and this will get you s rank as quickly as possible in fire emblem three hopes all right, my friends, I hope this video was useful and helpful to you. If it was, throw us a like. If it was, throw us a subscribe. There's other videos popping on screen right now, so click those ones for more Fire Emblem Three Hopes content, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.